Wow, what a place. The prom ballroom was located at 1190 University Avenue in St. Paul. It was built right next to the Lexington ballpark and built at a cost of $250,000 by developer Carl J. Fox, who also built the surf ballroom in Iowa and the Turp ballroom in Austin. Minneapolis star columnist Cedric Adams was thoroughly amazed at the new ballroom. Among his praises was that the color harmonies are perfect and the terraces lobby and lounge are carpeted. There is much to tell about the prom, which operated for 46 years. Cedric Adams wrote that the dance floor had 12,000 square feet, and next to the Trianon in Chicago, it was the largest ballroom between Chicago and the West Coast. Up to 2,000 people could dance at one time. The dance floor was made of maple and laid log cabin style, which allowed dancers to always dance with the grain of the wood. The bandstand could seat two bands at one time. The grand opening of the prom was on March 26, 1941. Contrary to urban legend, the prom was not opened by the Glenn Miller Orchestra, but by the Paul Moorhead Band from Omaha, and the Roy Stoner Band from Kansas City. This also calls into question the claim that 9,000 people showed up and 3,000 of them had to be turned away. Cedric Adams wrote that the building held 3,500. Only soft drinks were served at the prom, and specifically read no hard liquor allowed. Cedric Adams tells us that the bar was 72 feet long and was made out of one solid piece of redwood. Did you know the prom had a bowling alley? Neither did I. A duck pin bowling alley to be exact, with 22 regulation duck pin lanes. G.D. Myers was the manager of this endeavor. It may not have lasted long. So let's check out who performed at the prom in its first year in business. On March 27, 1941 Whoopi John hosted the prom's first old-time dance. The Blue Baron Orchestra appeared on April 2, 1941, advertised as the prom's first name band. April 15, 1941, Count Basie, the sensation of the nation, with vocalists Helen Humes and James Rushing April 23, 1941, Cab Calloway and his Cotton Club Orchestra, featuring the four cab drivers. Ted Fiorito came to the prom on June 4, 1941. His entourage included Candy Condito, the many-voiced man, song stylist Alan Cole, Frank Flynn on drums and vocals, Bert Traxler on sax, and the three chicks. Fiorito was a pianist and a songwriter. The prom promised audiences would swing and sway with Sammy Kay on August 13, 1941. Kay had the So You Want to Lead a Band shtick, recruiting members of the audience to try their hands at the baton. His singers were Tommy Ryan, Charlie Ryan, and the three cadets. A boogie for Britain jam session and dance originally scheduled for the Lyceum Theatre was transferred to the prom on September 14, 1941, to hold more people. Proceeds of the event went to bundles for Britain. Johnny Scat Davis appeared at the prom on October 1, 1941. Davis was a comedian, trumpeter, and scat singer. He had appeared in the films Brother Rat, Hollywood Hotel, and Cowboy from Brooklyn. October 27, 1941. Artie Shaw and his orchestra made a one-night stand, bringing $1 million in talent. His girl singer was Paula Kelly. Henry Bussey, orchestra leader and trumpet player of Hot Lips fame, entertained at the prom on November 6, 1941. On New Year's Eve December 31, 1941, the prom closed out the year with Jay McShann. Not only was he an entertainer, he was a top-shelf rhythm and blues musician. Frank Sinatra appeared at the prom ballroom on March 25, 1942, and finally Glenn Miller made it to the prom on June 1st. Featured vocalists were Ray Eberle, Tex Beneke, and Marion Hutt. Cedric Adams' column of May 16, 1942, in the Minneapolis Star Journal suggested that Miller had last been to Minneapolis four years before as a sort of professorial gent at the Nicolette Hotel's Minnesota Terrace, where the myth that he opened the prom came from is unknown but will probably never go away. In June 1944, mean old manager Earl Harding banned jitterbugging at the prom, claiming that only 8% of his patrons indulged in the fancy dancing, and it interfered with or injured the other dancers. The aggravated hoppers took their case to the mayor of St. Paul and demonstrated their moves, with the hopes of enlisting his help in lifting the ban. The mayor appointed Milton Rosen, the commissioner of public works, to look into the matter. Rosen's verdict, I saw some jitterbugging last night, and frankly, I don't think it is conducive to good health. Tommy Dorsey, his trombone, and his orchestra, 49 people, were busy in December 1944. On Saturday the 16th they played a dance at the prom, 
and on Sunday the 17th, they were at the Minneapolis Auditorium for a modern concert at 3 p.m. and a dance at 8 p.m. Apparently the sentimental gentleman of swing was on trial for hitting a guy but evaded jail to make the $4,500 gig. And that's it for the early years. Thank <laughs> you.